So today we are going to look at replacing a ballast. So this ballast is an F96 T12 75 watt lamp. Uh, it has single pins on it. Uh, these are the type of bulbs that have a spring-loaded end and a fixed end on the tombstones. Uh, so now I'm taking the dead pan off of the fixture. Uh, these ones are the type where you have to just squeeze the fixture and has like two little tabs on each side. So now there's the ballast and I'm just checking for power here before I start cutting and disconnecting everything. Basically all I did was turn the switch off for this uh, ballast replacement here. And um, I'm cutting the leads uh, quite short. I'm cutting them as close to the ballast as I can to save the wire there. I'm going to reuse that wire when I put the new ballast in. It saves me some time and some trouble from having to rewire too much or add more wire later. The ballast is held in by a, a fixed um, little tab on one side and a nut on the other. And here I'm actually looking at the, the wiring on the end of the tombstone. Um, this is a little bit different. So the new ballast here, uh, I'm putting in, the new ballast is a little shorter than normal. Um, generally new ballasts replace old ballasts. Um, they're exactly the same length, generally. Uh, this one happens to be a little bit shorter, so I had to put a, a little self-tapping screw in one end to hold it in place. And then I'm just putting it back on the little stud with a little nut there. Even though older ballasts tend to be like a heavier, bigger magnetic ballast, the newer ballasts are a lighter and smaller electronic ballast. Uh, they generally are the same length. Not always, like in this case here, but generally they are the same length. When they're not the same length, you can use just a tech screw to hold it in place. There's a little uh, a space for a screw. You, you'll see it on the ballast itself where you can just screw it in or add a self-tapping screw. So here, I know that I'm going to reuse these wires that are hanging down, so I'm just stripping the ends because I'm going to uh, connect them all together with wire nuts here in a minute. If you ever get confused about the wiring of a ballast, if you look closely on the ballast itself, there's a little label on there, and that label will show you exactly how to wire the new ballast. Sometimes it's different than the old ballast. And the colors of the wires may be different, which is generally the case. And that often throws people off when they see different colors of wires. Uh, it's not so much the colors, but the way that it should be wired. In other words, one specific wire, you know, whether it's the blue or the red wire, goes to a certain uh, bulb or tombstone at the end of the fixture. And that's, that's the main thing. So the colors might change. Uh, because of an old ballast and, and a new ballast are wired differently, uh, but as long as the um, wiring configuration is wired to the new ballast, then you have it wired correctly. So here I'm just making the splices with wire nuts. Um, some fixtures, uh, newer fixtures anyway, have little wagos, which is like a like a push-in type connector. Uh, which would replace the wire nut, but a lot of electricians generally don't like the Wago style connectors, uh, so a lot of us still use wire nuts, which are perfectly fine to use. Um, so here, the fixture was actually wired strangely. The, the power came in to one end of the fixture, and it was actually line voltage to the tombstone, so I had to wire it a tiny bit different. I had never seen that before. So what I'm doing here is I had to change the wiring configuration and extend the wire. Those two wires that I have right there is actually the power. Uh, they had cut the wires really short. They're only like two or three inches long. So I had to extend them to get the power to the ballast. So now that I had everything pre-wired, I'm just going to stick the bulbs in here real quick before I put everything back together and find out that I did something wrong, which uh, we'll see if I did that right or wrong here in a second. So the fixture turns on. Now I can take the bulbs back out real quick. And it's easier to find out if you did something incorrect before you put the whole fixture back together rather than put it together, test the fixture, and find out you did something wrong. You gotta take it all apart again. So 
Uh, now that I know that the bulbs work, I'm just going to tuck all the wires back in there smartly. And uh, you'll see electricians that have done this before. Everyone has their own little style on how to get these wires tucked into the fixture. Um, being that they are solid conductors, it's kind of easy to bend them or manipulate them to the shape or position that you want the wires inside the fixture. So I just kind of do like a little a wrap with a quick little bend in it to kind of keep the wires tight in, into the fixture while I put the dead fan on. And so, like I said initially, these little dead pans are held on by two little tabs that stick out on the sides. Uh, different fixtures um, are made a little bit differently. Some have a like a little um, like a tab, like a like a thumb screw type tab. It's like a half turn. Um, you just stick in a little hole there, but these ones are just held on by the two little tabs on the sides. And uh, so I'm going to put the bulbs in here one last time. And that should be about it. Thanks for watching.